Hello and thanks for coming to check this out. So for this guide I just want to share with you some things that I've learned for animating a walking cycle. So we're going to look at the keyframes and then a way to rig it as well. There are two project files for you to download if you like. Uh, one has the keyframe set up and the other one has the rig set up. And there's also a Photoshop file there if you want to use these legs as well. Um, so in this guide, first of all, I'm just going to pass on to you what I learned from a tutorial by Nick Koo. Uh, so when I was wanting to learn how to keyframe a walking cycle, I found Nick's tutorial. And there's a link in the description. Nick's tutorial is awesome and it will give you all the details you need about how to keyframe a walking cycle. So you should go and check that out first, get familiar with it and then come back here and this will make a lot more sense to you. Uh, so what shall we do now? Okay, um, what you're looking at here is just something that uh, I did to give the walking some context and we'll go now and have a look at the keyframe project file that's there for you to download. Here is the keyframe project file that you can download. So what have we got? Well, if you've gone and watched Nick's tutorial, what I've done here is just applied those keyframes to groups in motion. Uh, and in the project file, I've put this PDF here for you. So these are just screen captures of Nick's keyframes. So you can use these to line things up. Um, in when you do this, I recommend you use guides to help you uh, line things up. And another thing to point out is, well, if we look at this main legs group here, you can see that the y-axis is keyframe. So as you do your keyframes, the position of the feet are going to fluctuate. So if you can keyframe the y position to always keep the base of the foot at around the same place, that's going to look much better. OK, so. You've gone and learned Nick's keyframes. There's a reference for you here uh, to remind you of what they are. Let's look at the group. So I've got one main group, legs, and then in that we've got the right and left leg groups. Uh, I think I've named these right. Yes, the colored one it would be the left leg. Uh, so in this, let's turn this one off. We'll just look at this one here. So if you're new to motion, uh, then to set up body parts, you want to do something like this. I've got the right leg group, and in that group is the right leg. And that right leg contains everything, the thigh, the knee, and the foot. So if, well, you can see that the Z rotation of the anchor point is up here. So when we animate the Z rotation parameter, it's going to move around the anchor point, as you can see. And the right knee and the foot are all sitting inside that group. So when this upper group right leg moves, everything goes with it. So inside of this group is the right knee group and there's the right knee and its anchor point is around the joint there and so that can rotate independently of the thigh inside of the group and the foot's in there as well and there's nothing animated with the foot but I set it up uh, with the foot in case we want to add more detail with it later but for this animation it's it's just there so here is the right leg moving in action with the keyframes from Nick Koo's tutorial. And I'll point out that I've got each of the keyframes 
sit five frames apart for this animation. So to set this up, pretty much I used this reference uh, or a version of this and I've keyframed each stage first with the right leg and then with the left. Um, what we want to do is create uh, a set of published parameters so you can work quickly. So grab the right group, grab its Z, uh, sorry, the right leg in that group, grab its Z rotation, publish it through and do that for each group. And so then you can get all the Z rotation parameters together in the same place. Set your guides up, add the height for the main group itself. You see that's published there, so that's the Y parameter for that group. Add that to this, these published parameters as well. And whatever duration you want to use, I, I settled on five frames. It was nice and fast, uh, but not too drawn out. Uh, at each stage, then just adjust all the parameters. You're keyframing. Adjust all the parameters to match as close as you can these positions. Uh, so these keyframes will get you to, there's one, uh, let's turn this leg on here. Uh, these keyframes will get you to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's where you end up. Uh, so then what you want to do is just start again there. So we're back to one now. Uh, but from here, you don't need to do all the keyframes again. You can just take your time. Uh, if you're going to do the keyframing method, then take your time, come and grab each of these keyframe sets down here, and you can, from this one, I believe, we want to copy them. come forward to the end and you can paste to start that cycle again. So you want to do that for each segment. The right leg, the right knee inside the leg, then the left leg, the left knee inside the leg. Okay, so that is one way to go about it. That's with the keyframes. I'd recommend um, just getting in there, watch Nick's tutorial, and then you can use groups like these to set up the body parts to walk. Uh, keep in mind, use your guides and keyframe that Y position to maintain the foot's position relative to the bottom there. So that's a look at the keyframes, and now let's have a look at how to get this into a rig. Here's the other project file that's there for you to download. You'll see uh, there's a group here, Legs Reference, and that is just the same keyframed group from before with the opacity turned down uh, to help you line things up. And in Published Parameters, you'll see all of these published parameters uh, for this group. They have nothing to do with the rigged group. So here in the rigged uh, group, I have got the right leg Z rotation and the right knee Z rotation applied to this slider named right and the same for the left. So from the left group, uh, those Z rotation parameters that we keyframed before, this time they are applied to sliders and then the left slider and the right slider are both applied to this main slider here. 
Uh, so here is the main slider with the left slider and the right slider applied. So now if uh, we run through, it will go through the walking cycle. And to animate it, um, we can keyframe the slider from beginning to, to end. You'll see it looks uh, a bit uh, out of place. That's because with this group, uh, the wide position to keep the feet around uh, the same area is not keyframed. I've left that out. So that's uh, pretty much how I set up the walking cycle with rigs instead of keyframing. And yeah, I'm just sort of still learning about rigging and all of that. So there's probably better ways to go about it, but I wanted to share with you what I've worked out so far. So what I'll do now is go and show you, uh, for the beginners out there, how to set these rig sliders up so that they correspond to uh, keyframes and if you really want to learn a lot about rigging uh, I recommend Ripple Training is a really good source for professional courses. Okay so let's jump into this demo project here. Uh, so you saw from before we, we did our keyframes um, by keyframing the Z rotation of the groups. What we're going to do this time is set up some rigs and put the Z rotation onto rigs. So I've got uh, this rig here. I'm going to add a slider. I'm going to call this uh, slider left. And I'll come into this group here. So here's the left leg group. Here's the right knee group. So there's different things you can do. Um, and I don't intend for this to be a huge tutorial about rigging. Uh, what I like to do is just come and grab the Z rotation and I'm going to drag it in there. And then I'll grab the knee and just going to do the same thing, drag it in there. Okay, there's other ways you could do that. You could use drop down menu from there or from here. Uh, so here we are. So now we have those parameters on a slider. But we've got all these keyframes and we've got just these two positions on a slider. So what I'm going to do is add different positions here. I'm going to add by double clicking. Uh, let's just do three here. And I'm going to give this a value of 10 and give this one a value of 20 and give this one a value of 30 so we're running from 0 to 100 so it's about 10% of the distance each time. I'm going to turn my legs reference group back on and I'm going to move forward five frames into the first position. So here I am at the first position. I want my slider then to be at the first position here, which is at 10. So to be exact, because you've uh, given them values, to be exact, come in and type the value, call it, call it 10. So now my slider's here, which corresponds to the first position here, and using the legs reference group, I'm going to line up the leg group. And there it is. That's all I need to do for now. So now we want to go to the next point here. I'm going to type in here 10 to come forward 5 frames to the next stage. And up here I'm going to type in 20 to come forward to the next interval. And so now I want my leg to conform to this shape. So I'm just going to grab the parameters here and line them up to get them into place like this and just in this demo group like I mentioned before the Y axis is not keyframed yet uh, so 
I'll leave that to you to work out. But you want the y um, for this main group. You want that y position managed the same way. Or you could put the y position onto this, onto its own slider as well. So now if I move the playhead, you'll see nothing happens with the legs at all. Let's turn off the reference. But if I move this slider, you'll see what you've done. So if you follow these steps all the way, uh, then you will have the full left leg cycle from start to finish, and then do the same steps with the, with the right leg. And what you'll end up with is this right leg and left leg rig completed. And then what you want to do is attach, uh, sorry, put each of these into one ring. And that's how we got to this uh, situation here. Uh, okay, so that's all I wanted to share with you today. Um, rigging's still something that I'm trying to work out, so um, if you know better ways to do this, please let me know. I'd really like to learn about it. Anyway, um, I hope this is useful for your future projects and thanks for watching.